You know, some truths really are self-evident. I mean, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, all that happens here. That happens in tires. In a space like this that feels dirty, feels like do-it-yourself vibes, is important so that the new people who are coming to Detroit, however much we want to resist what they may bring or how they may change things, they're coming and they're here and we need to let them see and feel why we are the way we are and why the city is the way that it is. You know, I, I didn't know when I went in what, I didn't know who owned what, what sort of permits had been attained but it felt like I was walking into any sort of professionally run venue. The, the way Tires always sat on that boundary of illegitimacy and legitimacy, it, it's always been a precarious place and I think my hope was that it would always move towards legitimacy but retain sort of the character usually belongs to illegitimate. Growing up in the Detroit area, Things are very segregated culturally, I mean, historically they have been, scene-wise. And this place doesn't have, is the opposite of that. It was in buildings like this, it was in places like this, that techno was invented. The energy that fuels those musicians who create new art firms, the energy that fuels those artists who create Detroit's great street art, you don't find that in a nice building. What happens here and what is special because it's one of the few places that isn't being converted, where people can come and they can hear someone who invented an art form, but more importantly, they can be inspired to create their own art form. In such a short amount of time, everyone that I've been working with in Detroit over the last 10 years, we're all talking about tires and having their events and their programs here. There's film crews at tires uh, coming in from, from New York and there's uh, record labels and internationally acclaimed DJs that are very selective about where they play, that, are, that we're all about coming into tires. Community organizations, uh, poetry slams. This venue has really become a, uh, something of of importance and something really substantive in the arts and culture community. There's not many places like that in Detroit, let alone the world, where you can go and be inspired to create and it stimulates your life, your friends' lives, the city's life. I attribute a lot of my own success to this place. Right now, Detroit Techno don't have anything physical to hold on to it or to touch and to call it Detroit Techno or to call it ours. This place feel like it's more like ours than a venue, you know what I mean? You know, we was invited in, you know, you know, Michael was very careful to, you know, find out the roots of techno, you know, you know, instead of just coming in and trying to set up shop without talking to anybody, he talked to everybody, he brought everybody in and made everybody feel like family. And um, yeah, it was a very positive experience. We want to uh, maintain spaces like tires, you know, for our own artistic sanity, you know what I mean? Because it, it helps us have an outlet and a platform to showcase to the world what we can do. I mean, I've seen Juan Atkins play at tires. I've seen like legends, living legends, rock shows, Kyle Hall, all the way to the new people, all the way to myself, all the way to you know, Bruiser Brigade, Triple Seven, you, you name them, man. Everybody stepped through the doors of tires. Some really incredible people have played here and it's kind of incredible to think that, you know, you pull the plug on this and that's a loss. That's a major loss for not just this neighborhood that it's uh, kind of created and re-energized, but the city as a whole. You know, opening up a place like Tires isn't just about, you know, the, the music. Um, it's also about the what that can do for the local economy and make it uh, a better place. 
you know, Lower East Side has been leveled. Um, it's one of the most abandoned areas of the city. So when you see something like tires opening, um, you start to people will start to see that there's there's this positive feeling about this location. I looked at some of the guys that were working here. I knew, grew up with. They were on the gate. Um, I said, "Wow, he stays right down here, also." Uh, some of the guys in the club that were security, they in, they're from the neighborhood. So it kind of, I, when I when I when I looked at that, I appreciated that the person that I met had involved the neighborhood in his dream. When you include the community into something that's in the community, you, you can't lose. I think the reason why Tires has been so successful is because of, of Michael's creative vision. And I really feel uh, that uh, what would help uh, bring it to the, to the next level of sustainability is having an investor come in who can appreciate that vision and, and bring a little know-how and some resources uh, to help grow this creative initiative to the next level and help it be sustainable. We only have these, these old spaces as long as we can use them. The trouble is, is there's no money. And so you walk into a bank and you say, hey, I want to start a thing called Tires, and it's going to be a stage, and it's going to bring in acts that don't have a space. It's going to be great. We're going to have a bar out of an old truck, uh, and people are going to love it. They would laugh you out of the building. And so how do we fund stuff like this? It doesn't happen through crowdfunding. That'll raise a little bit. But the kind of money that you need to build a place like this has to come from angel investors. It has to come from people who believe in the model and are willing to risk a little bit to make something really cool happen. And I think it can pay a return. I don't think this is just flushing money down the drain. It's not a grant. It's not a, an art project. This is something that, it, with a, a small, a small bump, a little kickstart, could really turn into something that could sustain itself for decades. I think that, like, yeah, if, if Detroit can advocate for a space like tires, that's to Detroit that doesn't understand its own legacy in some ways.